So we're just gonna put the output level to about halfway right here. Let's get it around 2,500 on the fine. Just fine tune it a little bit if you can. That's as low as now. There you go. Hell yeah. Nice. It's good. So yeah. So these buttons are kind of interesting. We got the output level we got to deal with. We got the sign thing we got to deal with. We set the range to about 5,000. So that way we could use the chorus and the fine knobs over here to fine tune this to about 2,500. All right, now we're going to be clicking the auto set button on the oscilloscope. It's going to be right there. And all right, so we're going to count uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven complete cycles. So this little 20 volts thing is indicating that one of these squares is going to be 20 volts. And this 200 microseconds indicates that one of these is going to be 200 microseconds. Now that we got this fine tune, we can try to change this slightly and just barely. There it is. Yeah, you can see. Nice. Good job. So now we're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cycles. Our new voltage is 12.1, and we're still at 200 microseconds. This is supposed to be tuned to exactly 10,000. So we're going to zoom in, and we're just going to get a few of these cycles on the screen. Maybe one more. Bam! There we go. We'll just use the scale button down here in the horizontal side. So we've got three cycles. We've got 12.1 volts and 20 microseconds. So we're going to be adjusting this to fit three on the bottom and three on the top, which means we're going to zoom this down and get it to about right right there or so yeah our new results are going to be 20.4 volts 20 milliseconds 20 microseconds and we still have three sine waves oh, so we all right we're going to click the cursor button and what we're going to do is we're going to change this from time we're going to click that button and change it to amplitude and now we've switched it to a voltage thing you turn all right we're going to click the multi-purpose button and that's going to allow us to switch to this top side. And then we're going to turn that, get that to the top. And then go and click it one more time. We're going to get to the bottom one. And then we're going to drag that down there. Perfect. And we line this up. And then we can use this to delta V right here is going to be 119. So because these are two 20.4 volts, each one of these squares should be 20.4 volts. And so this entire thing should be about six times 20.4. So we should be getting about, you know, 122.4 if we were to really uh, calculate all this. But we got 119, so we have a small. The function generator is connected. So now we're going to take this horizontal position thing and we're just going to move it, slide it just a little bit until we get to the center here. You got it? Just about. So we measure one period. Bottom, right? yeah. this is what so we're going to measure from, like, from the bottom here doing to the bottom there. Here. That should be fine. Just or like bottom to bottom. Yeah. So we're recording the period as being 100 milliseconds and the frequency is being about 10,000 right there. I'll be one over it of course. All right, here we've got our little decade resistor box. We're setting this to 2,950. We're going to uh, set this to a square wave, which would be this one right here. So we're clicking. Um, yeah, we're trying to set this to about 200 frequency. So after clicking the auto set button, it will refresh the screen and it'll make it look really True. nice like this that. Is this is the coaxial cable. We're going to be plugging it into this little cable right here. I'm going to plug that in real quick. Hell yeah. Nice. All right. So we're, we're setting up a new circuit. It's going to go from this function generator. It's going to go directly into the resistor through this red wire. That's the positive. And then through the resistor into the capacitor and then back over here into the function generator again. Now, we're also going to be taking this thing from the oscillatory scope and pulling it through here. We've got the, um, the clip. That's what we're going to clip over here to this side. That's the negative. And the positive, that's the probe. We're going to click that over here on this side. Hell yeah. So at first the oscilloscope is trying to be measuring this function generator. As you can see because the probe is over here, the clip is over here. So it's measuring whatever's 
um, the voltage changes across this. But if we were to change the probe to over here on this side, now these two would be connected like this, so it would be mainly a change between these two. So now we're going to be changing, or we're going to be measuring the capacitor. So we're going to go ahead and take this probe from this side, and we're going to move it to this little clip over here, just like that. Nice and easy. So if you move this and now on our screen, as you can see, we get a nice little graph like this. So what this is essentially trying to say is that our capacitor was charged up here and then instantly discharged over here. And then we're doing it again. Boom. So we're like charging and re charging and discharging the capacitor a bunch of times over and over again. Now what's really important is to notice these absolute flat areas right here. Because it's actually flat, that means that it's done charging for this period of time right here it's done charging like there's it's not doing anything same thing over here it is done discharging so those flat lines are pretty important so now we're going to try to find a whole bunch of points on this curve that kind of line up to these creases we have one here one kind of at the top there maybe one around here so we're gonna find seven points on this line and try to figure out what this is all about so again, uh, what we're going to try to do now is, again, we got this little time that we're going to be finding. Um, at first, we were here at zero, and the entire change of voltage from, from, from basically here to there is 12, right? But on the second point, we're going to be moving down to this little point right here, 84 microseconds. And at that particular point, um, we were going to try to find a measurement right there. The point around here is going to be about 9.19. We want to get good vertical lines. When we stop at the vertical lines, we can easily measure the voltage. So find the next vertical line, which I guess it would be that one if you want. Be able to find this little point, which is that second line at time is about 128 microseconds. We switch that to the voltage. We discover that that particular point had a 7.8. For the next experiment, we're going to be replacing the known capacitor with an unknown capacitor. And we're essentially going to be repeating the experiment we just did. So for time equals zero, we're going to try to figure out what the change is voltage from the bottom to the top. It should be 12. So now we're going to find seven points and we're just going to follow these horizontal lines. Point number one, two, three, four, five, and we'll six, six and seven if we can. So for point number one, we were managed to get this line right here, and we're gonna check the voltage to see what that is. It turns out to be a change of nine volts to that point. So the point of all this was to generate some, some points over here that were gonna give us a little curved line here. Take the LN of both sides of the voltage equation as is a capacitor is being discharged. And um, well, we were able to get this little line here based off of the natural log of our graph here and uh, based off of that we're able to get things like the time constant if we want to calculate for that we could even calculate for uh, an, an unknown capacitor for example